My name is Samantha Almeida. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm 29 years old. I've been living in America for 13 years now. I went to high school, I graduated, but I couldn't go to college because I don't have my papers. And I really want to be because I feel more as, a, as an American than as, as a Brazilian. And I just want to get my paper. I want to get in line, but there's nothing open to it. And I hope that, they, that 2013 is the year. Okay. My name is Juan. She's my sister, so I've been here the same time, 13 years. I was like 12 when I came in. Uh, I was able to apply for DACA, the program that Obama put out, but she wasn't because she was six months too old. So I, I know my situation is not the best, but it's a little bit better than her, and I wanted her to get the same opportunity. Also, my mom, who lives with us here, so. I'm happy for him because he, like, he really deserved, he was always a good boy in school and everything, but at the same time, I think, I did everything that he did except for six months, not even that much, but I put and I tried, spoke with some lawyers, and they all told me, it's unfortunate, but you can try, but uh, it doesn't seem like he would qualify. And I know at least another 10 other people who went to school with me, that they are going through the same thing. They're all younger brothers and sisters, they were able to apply, but they didn't because maybe six months to a year difference of age. It's like unfair just because I have practically the same story so I feel like if I deserve it she deserves as well. There's also my mom uh, who came before us, worked to get us through high school and she has nothing. She has like less than us. She has the best opportunity than us to get paid. So I think you know, something needs to be done for everybody and yeah, include as much people as we can. Your mom is here. Like she's really happy for him and, and excited, but at the same time she kind of feels guilty because she said if uh, if any chance I would have brought Samantha maybe a little bit earlier, she would have qualified and everything. But I told her it's not her fault. She came to America with like two hundred dollars in her pocket and she had to work through to bring me and my brother because my father never helped her with anything. So I told her it's not your fault, it's just the way life is. People need to understand that people who came here legally, they didn't come to do anything criminal. They came for a better opportunity. And it sounds bad, but it sounds like just a, a detail that we didn't have the papers and stuff. But we did. Have, we do everything we can to fit into the community, help the community, and we want to help the country go, the community go around. I have a friend that she uh, she's about the same age I am and her sister is about the same age as my brother is. And her, her parents are here, they don't want to go back. Her sister just got her work permit, but my friend doesn't have her, and her father and mother doesn't have it either. So it's, so, it's only growing, and people, like, and people are getting afraid to drive, to go to work. People are even afraid to go to the grocery store sometimes driving because they're afraid that they'll get stopped and that something will happen to them. It was in 2011, I, I was stopped by a uh, state police in Medford, Massachusetts. And as soon as he saw me that I drive with like an international license, he told to my face that he, he, that he hated uh, illegal immigrants, that uh, his job was to send us back. And but he couldn't arrest me because I have never done anything wrong, but the only thing was that I was driving the car. But he brought my car told, I had to go and pick it up, and he sent me to court. I went to court, I paid a fine, and I, his, I, and like, I had to start driving again because I need to work, I have to pay my bills and everything. Last year, December, I was driving again and going to work on a Saturday morning and the not state police stopped me. And he came to me and he asked me why I was driving. And I told him, but I had a license before, but it, I wasn't able to renew. And he asked me, how did you get the license? I told the truth, I created a fake number. He said, no, you stole from someone. I said, no, I didn't. And they said, you can't, I said, you can go and check this, the social security doesn't belong to anybody. And he said, you do know I can deport you, right? I said, I, I said you do what you gotta do. But I don't know like what happened if he went back and checked to see if everything that I told him was true. He, he didn't even he didn't even gave me a ticket. He didn't call my car. 
but he told me, wait here and bring someone who has a license to remove the car. So, you know, like, and from now on, my mother is so worried about us driving that as soon as, like, I, I drive to work, I have to call her and make sure that I got there safe. If, if I'm leaving, I said, Mom, I'm leaving, because she's always worrying about us and everything. And we lose opportunities for jobs. We apply for jobs, they tell you, qualify, you have everything, but you don't have the paper. What is the reason that you're riding the bus this, this weekend? I just want to make sure that something gets passed. And just not like for younger people, for everybody, because I think not only because the young people need their parents over here and everything, but I think a lot of older people, they're here to work. They're not criminal and they deserve as much as we do. They go through a lot more than we go through because we got an opportunity to go to school, so we learned English, so it's a little bit better for us. And I think they need as much as we do, if not more than we do, because they're easy to prey on. And yeah, so I think everybody needs to get a chance to say something. My mother has a saying that you have to stop complaining and you have and you have to go after what you're looking for. And if like uh, if the president, if all the politicians, they don't know what like we're going through, they are not going to do anything. But I believe that if they start hearing like the stories and everything, and seeing that like we're not criminals, or, like we love this country as much, or, or even like it's more that we love our own country. If you ask my mother today, okay, Selma, you give up your Brazilian nationality to become just American. I, I can tell you, she, she'll do like nothing in a her heartbeat. She'll, she won't even think about it. My brother, he came here, he was like 12 years old. He talks about having like a green card, but not to go back to Brazil or anything. He wants to work and go to other places. So, you know, like, his Portuguese is like like he's better at English than he is a Portuguese. So it's only because of a piece of paper you're telling me like I'm not an American. I learned to love this country. This country gave an opportunity to my mother at 44 years old that she never had in like in her all all life in Brazil. She she learned to drive in here like she was almost 50 when she learned to drive. And in America, I think that like they don't care if you're too old, too young. If you're fat, if you're skinny, they will, like if you want to work, you have an opportunity to do it. Why, why is citizenship the important piece? Why is residency not enough? Uh, because I like because I believe the residence we we would have to be renewing, and we would never be sure if like we're going to be able to renew because you never know who's going to be the new president. Like in Massachusetts, before you could get a license. And Mitt Romney became the governor, and was the first thing that he told that if you didn't have a social security, you couldn't get a license. So, like, uh, so, like, you know, like, you never know. Like, uh, like, 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 I could be an, uh, a resident today, and tomorrow I could be he deported and everything. And I don't want to go back. I want to go back to visit, but I don't. I don't want to go back to leave. American is is my country now. I cannot complain too much about Massachusetts because my mother came to Florida when she first came. And if you ask her, Florida is only for vacation. She doesn't like Florida to leave. Because it's her without a car. And she came, she didn't speak any English. And a friend of hers told her, Selma, if you want to go to Massachusetts, she said, I don't know anybody in there. She said, no, I have friends that they'll help you. She came here, she worked like two, three jobs without a car, and she was able to do it. So the, like um, the only thing it's basically like um, a way to go to college because we like we both want to go to college, and we also want to be able to drive without being worried that we're going to be stopped. Like I cannot see a police car that I'm always afraid that they're going to stop me and something something's going to happen. I love this country. It feels like home to me, and I'm ready to become a citizen and everything that goes with it, like the responsibility, oh, no. and, oh, okay. and that I feel like I'm an American, and I'm ready to be part of this country. Uh, I want to say, Mr. President, I love this country. I don't want anything, I don't take anything for granted. I don't want anything for free. And I just want an opportunity to work and go to school and make sure that we were able to help my mother. It's hard, you know, my mother got divorced, I was 11 years old.
My father disappeared not to pay child support. We were going through a really hard time in Brazil. A friend of my mother came to America and she said, Selma, I can help you, bro. My mother said, I don't have any money. She said, don't worry about your ticket, I'll pay, and once you start working, you'll pay me back. My mother saw everything we had and left us with people to watch after us with, with no money, and she came with $200. She came, she worked so hard, but before she came, she went, she went before a judge and made sure that she was not abandoning us, that she was coming here to get us a better life. Then when time comes, a judge would assign our passport in, in place of my father. She brought us, and one thing that she made sure was that we went to school. She told me, you are not working until you learn English and you go to school. She told me, as soon as you drop off at school, I'm sending you back to Brazil. She put me through high school. She put my brother through high school. We worked, we tried to help her, but it's so hard for her now. She had three surgeries last year. She wants to work, but we, like I do house cleaning. I'm not ashamed of my job, but I want that something better for me. And my mother with the paper, she can do something else that will be easier for her. Because she said, I don't want to stop working, but how can she work with another thing without a social? And, she, and, like, and she's worried about that something's going to get passed, but she's not going to get, uh, like, that, like, that, like, she'll not be able to get her paper and everything. And if, and, and if my mother goes back, we'll go back because she, because like she like like she's the only person that we have. So if she goes back and something happens to her and like we're here, there is not there is no way that like we can roll and come back. So it's really really hard. What would it mean to your mom for comprehensive immigration reform to pass for your family to? Be on track to citizenship. I think, first of all, she'll be happy for us just because we'll be able to get more opportunity. And quite frankly, like I think she wants for her too, but it means more to her that we do get it. And I think it'll be easier for her. She'll be the happiest woman on earth. She told us that the day that we get our papers, she thinks she's going to buy a a bottle of champagne and it's gonna open and everything, so it's hard. <laughs>